Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Tanisha Davis, this is Fun and Budget. And in this video, we are going to talk about why I feel that YouTube is a better investment than real estate. Yes, I said it. Now here's the thing, keep in mind, I am speaking from my own personal experiences. The numbers that I'm going to be using are going to be my real numbers from my own experience. I understand that there are many different experiences in both real estate as well as YouTube and that they're all not going to reflect the story that I am telling, but it is my hope that I give you enough receipts that you need and I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to even have enough receipts for all of you. I already know. I already know. Y'all in my comments. I already know. I already know. I also want you to know that with my real estate investment, I did not buy it as an investment. I say that because when you do go to purchase real estate as an investment, you're going to look for some key things. And one of those key things is going to be your profit ratio. You want to invest in something that you know you're going to make a profit from. That was not my case. I am like tons, millions of landlords out there who end up becoming a landlord by circumstance and not necessarily by first choice. My story, and I said this in other videos, is the fact that I had a property that I lived in for five years. I purchased this property 17 years ago. I lived in it for five years and then I decided to move to a different property in a time where my area took a hit in value so I was not able to easily sell it for a profit so I decided to rent it out instead. Okay, that was 17 years ago. So these numbers are going to be the numbers of that property and then we're going to give you my numbers for my YouTube channel. So the first part of this video, we're going to talk about YouTube. I'm going to give you some of my numbers in YouTube and I'm not giving you all of my numbers, mainly because if you are familiar with my channel, one of the things you will know is that I've never broken out my income. You see my monthly income. I never said what part came from where, not even rental income. I just added it all up and threw it all out there is this is what I'm making this month. And the reason for that is because I want to keep a little bit of privacy when it comes to how much I make on my day job and how much I make in other areas. So that's why these things weren't broken out. But for the purposes of this video, I am going to talk about, I'm going to give you some numbers for the last two months in YouTube. So this isn't every month. YouTube fluctuates, but we're going to just talk about something more recent because I do want to give you some real numbers. So let's talk about YouTube first. So basically I grabbed this screenshot of the last 28 days screenshot. My five top performing videos in that 28 day period was my tenant hasn't paid rent in over 14 months with 53,000 views. No help for landlords. Tenant hasn't paid rent in over a year. A little over 27,000 views. My eight streams of income that got a little over 5,000 views. Was I bamboozled or gullible listening to the advice of friends? That got a little over 5,000 views. Issues with adulting and discussing what I do for a living. That got 3,500 views. Now, the funny thing with YouTube is views don't always equal money, right? And so I wanna compare this a little bit with my top earning videos for the 28 day period. So the top earning videos was my tenant hasn't paid rent, which made almost $3,000. No help for landlords, got $277. Issues with adulting, got $179. Now, if you look at my top five videos and performance, issues with adulting was number five, but yet it made more money than some of the videos that got more views than this video got. Um, property managers, why I never had one, got $121 and that didn't even make it on my top videos for the period. And then my net worth update journey got $111, which also didn't make it on my top videos in this period. And I say that to say that when it comes to YouTube, it's hard to say that just because a video got more views that it made more money. And that's because videos are measured by what they make between the CPM and the RPM. And the CPM is the cost per thousand impressions. And the RPM equals revenue per thousand views. And that is basically how much do my videos make every thousand views, essentially. 
So if we take a look at this, we see that my RP, my CPM changes daily. In the month of June, it ranged anywhere between $15 and $30. I would say on average, it was around the upper, it was above $25. And because of that fluctuation on YouTube, I make anywhere between one to $5,000 a month. And in this 28 days, I had over 261,000 views and I had over 35,000 watch time hours. And this equaled $4,875 for 28 days of YouTube, okay? Now, Let's jump over and talk about real estate. Now on this channel, we've always talked about the numbers to the main home that I lived in, but we've never, ever, ever, ever talked about the numbers to my rental property. Today, we are going to unveil the rental property numbers. <laughs> All right, bring on the judgment, bring on the judgment. But here we go. This is where we're at. For my rental property, now this property has been refinanced, went from something in the fours to 3.37%, which was actually pretty good because a lot of times people will tell you that your rental property or investment property is always going to have a higher interest rate than your main property. At the time before I refinanced my main home, my main property interest rate was 3.25 and then this one came in at 3.37. So that wasn't too bad. Okay. Um, currently, I owe a balance of $218,415 on the property. My payment on the property is $1,565. Of that, about $555 goes to principal, $616 goes to interest, and $395 goes to insurance and taxes. I rent my rental property out for $1,750 a month. So we see that once I subtract what I rent my rental property out and then what my mortgage is on that rental property, I have $185 remaining, okay? But here's the thing, that's not it, that's not it. After we look at that 185, I still have to pay the HOA on that property. The HOA is $947 a year, so that's about $79 a month. So now let's subtract that $79 from that 185. That leaves us with $106. Now, for the longest, I know this was not a smart move. I say that already. For the longest, I was paying for a security system on the property. Not a smart move. No, I would not ever do that again. That was not a good business move, but it's what I did. So we subtract that, which was $70 a month. That leaves us with $36 in false profit. And this does not even include, like there were so many people in the comments who said, you should have had a property manager. So we see now that even if I would have had a property manager, I would have been in the red and I would have been coming out of my pocket to actually fund the property manager expense, okay? And a lot of people say, oh, the property manager only takes 10%, but y'all see where my numbers are, right? So we have $36 of false profit, and I'm calling it false profit because even though we have $36, I can't just cash that $36 and go buy dinner with it. No, I have to leave that money in a bank account to accumulate to actually pay for things as they come up with the property, to pay for repairs, to pay for re contractors, repairmen, so on, so forth, as well as possibly cover the expensive if there is tenant turnover, which I didn't experience. But if we had, there's that. But with that $36, that only gives us $432 a year if nothing went wrong that year. But in the past year, here are some of the expenses that I actually put into my rental property. Um, I had to do roof repair and the deductible on that was $500. I had to buy some plywood for the roof repair that wasn't covered by my insurance. Cost of that was $195. And then I also had to update the smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors to make sure that they were in regulation with Maryland standards. And the cost of that was $165. So in that past year, a year that my tenant was not paying rent, I had already spent $860 in repairs. So. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are thinking, well, that's your scenario. You're not charging enough for your rental. But here's the thing. 
we can't just make up numbers. We can't just charge whatever we want to charge to cover what we feel we need to cover, right? So if I look at Zillow, well, let's go to Zillow for an estimate on what I could possibly charge for this unit. According to Zillow, I can charge $2,200. That's the upper end, right? So I'm going to say let's go with $2,000. So even if I charge $2,000 for this unit, I would still have to subtract the mortgage, which was $1,565. I wrote these numbers wrong, so we got to redo this math. Equals $400. And $35. And then we got to subtract the HOA at $79. And then in this go round, we made a great decision and we do not add the security system to our bill. We actually add that to the rent or we allow the tenant to get in their own security system and pay their own bill, right? And so we're not going to subtract anything for a security system. We still don't have a property manager because in our situation, we not, can't necessarily afford one so we're just going to go with these numbers with no property manager even though i told you guys in my last video on why i don't have a property manager that if i did this again i would definitely hire the help of a property manager but in this scenario we don't have one so we have 356 dollars of profit a month right and that 356 times 12 means we are making four thousand two hundred and seventy two dollars a year in profit on our rental now I know that there's a lot of people in a better situation than this but here's the thing are they revealing their numbers are they revealing their for real numbers are they taking away the stuff that they do throughout the unit like the repairs that they make throughout the year are they averaging that out are they averaging out any other costs associated with their rental unit um, or are they just showing you what they receive in rental income because it's easy to look good. It's easy for me to say, well, in rental income, I get $1,750, of which none of that is reflected in my budget. I never actually added that number to my budget. So $1,750 in rental income sounds good until you start taking away everything that you have to pay, right? So in that $4,272, it still has to be held because we have to hold it for possible repairs, possible insurance deductibles, possible vacancies and for turn and turnovers and what that means when I say the vacancy part it means like if my unit remains empty I'm now paying the full mortgage with no income coming in and then turnover renovations and repairs means that to turn a unit over I have to make sure we're going to have painting done we may have to do something with the flooring whether it's replace the flooring or just deep clean the flooring um we're going to have to have deep cleaning and this is just at a minimum it doesn't even have to do with anything that may have to be repaired like for instance a cabinet drawer which I had to repair in my unit um so things like that so we have to hold on to this money for dear life we cannot spend any of this money because we don't know what the future holds now when I compare this to YouTube YouTube is a much much better investment because there's little to no overhead once you buy your equipment, which you don't even have to buy equipment, I YouTube with my, for my first two to three years using my cell phone, a phone that I've already had. But once you buy equipment, let's say like a tripod, some lights, a camera, you don't have to keep buying those things, okay? You get to write off so many things. You get to take so many tax deductions for the filming and the videos that you do make. If you're doing a food review, that food is now tax deductible. If you're taking a trip and reviewing hotels and reviewing locations, those locations are now tax deductible. If you write, if you rent out locations to make content, that is now tax deductible. So there's so many things that you can now write off because of your YouTube business. You have less risk overall. You don't have to deal with human beings, like with rentals, obviously. The whole nature of having investment property is the fact that you're going to interact with other human beings who are going to run into real world human conditions whether that's health whether that's financial whether it's emotional you're going to be dealing with people who are going to have real life ups and downs month after month after month you don't have to deal with what's happening with the economy layoffs recessions pandemics you don't have to deal with what happens with nature. Is there a tornado? Is there a hurricane? Is there a bad rainstorm? Is there hail damage? That's what happened to my roof. It was hail damage that ended up creating leaks and then the roof just ended up having to be redone. 
right? So you don't have to deal with acts of God. You don't have to deal with different human conditions. You don't have to deal with economic conditions. So it's less risk, less overhead, and pure profit for the most part. Of course, you're going to pay taxes on it. But the same way I had to, pay, I have to pay taxes on my rental. Now, back to the risk in the rental when you're dealing with the risk of dealing with other human beings who can choose not to pay their rent for one reason or another. This past year, the reason was the pandemic, then the moratorium and all of these other things, right? So I said in another video that the rental income that I lost out on with my tenant not paying her rent was $5,138, right? Yeah, in a 28-day span on YouTube, I made $4,875, almost recouping that whole entire loss back, right? But actually, I did recoup it all back because if we look at what I made in the month of May, I made $3,076. And then in the month of June, I made $3,178. A grand total of $6,254. And it cost me essentially nothing to make that money. Whereas when you directly compare it to my rental, let's say in my real world of me renting it for $1,750, and even in my best case scenario of renting it for $2,000 a month. So in a month, I profit more than I make in both gross and net rental income in both my real situation and my best case situation. So I know what some of you are saying, but with YouTube, you can't sell the business down the road making a huge profit like you can with a rental investment, right? So they say properties appreciate, over time and over time you get to cash out on that appreciation but here's my question is it really worth it are you really making that much when you look at the cost and the profit over time again let's take my real world scenario into consideration here and I know it's not the best I know it's not the best but it's what we're working with right so even if we take a look at Zillow's best estimates of $2,200 a month, giving us a net fake profit of $585 a month. This still doesn't beat what I make on YouTube. So let's take a look at what Zillow tell, tells us. So according to today's numbers, I can sell my property at $330,900. What I have remaining on the mortgage, we're just going to round that down to $215,000. Don't worry, I'll just pay the difference, guys, okay? But for this scenario, let's take a look at this. According to Zillow, it says the estimated prep and repair costs, now this is very conservative, $6,000. I believe I would have to put more into my property than that, but we're going to go with their numbers of $6,000, okay? And then it says the estimated closing costs, and this is what you pay to the agents for selling it, and your taxes, and insurance, and all of that other fun stuff. It's about $26,887, okay? And so together, that is about $32,887. So what they're saying is my estimated net proceeds is about $83,000. But is it? Is it? I've had my home for 17 years, okay? In the course of 17 years, I paid about $14,450 in HOA fees. Also, in the course of 17 years, now this is a low estimate, I paid about $17,000 in repairs. Now, this isn't even taken into consideration if we have a property manager. This isn't even taken into consideration if you have turnover and your property sits vacant. This isn't even taken into consideration the amount of money it may take to bring your property back up to rental conditions. So just taking those two numbers by themselves, this brings our $83,000 down to $51,000, okay? $51,000 in profit is about an average of $3,000 a year over the course of the 17 years years okay in YouTube I told you before I make between one to five thousand dollars a month but even if we go on the very low end of one thousand dollars a month in four years of an established YouTube channel established being the key word I beat what it took 17 years for my property to make 